Anya Higdon, KYTC Central Office Planning. Oh, Keith Griffey, Mula County, I'm sorry. We're just over top. Yeah, we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. We're catching up. I'm sorry. <laughs> there you are. So, yes, but thank you. Matt Bernie Washington. Bowling, St. Matthews. Keenan Stratman, St. Matthews. <laughs> Kelly Carrico, University of Louisville. John Callahan, the Louisville Metro. Michelle King, Louisville Metro Air Pollution Control. <laughs> Emma Ledu <laughs> was Louisville Metro. <laughs> Justin Tackett, Floyd County. Jim Moody, Indot. Brittany Montgomery, Town of Clarksville. Linda Dean is proxy for Oldham County. Jim Urban, planning Oldham County. Matt Mignetti, City of Jefferson County. Larry Cheney, Kipta. Ashley Kenny. David Burton. Stacey Burton, Kipta. Take it to Ryan. Terry Kipta. Amanda Jeffers, Kipta. Steve Kennedy, Curtis and I. Jeff Moore, Neil Shaker. Stacey Richard Park. Megan Bennett, Nancy Snow Turk, and Mitchell Mobility Council. Arthur Jones, City of Shepherdville. Tom York, Kentucky Area Education. Steve Lynch, Kentucky Area Education. Bradley Coombs, Louisville Metro Air Pollution Control District. Amy Marcus, Louisville Metro Transportation Planning. Dave Landon, with Palmer Engineering. Tim Robinson, GRW. Thomas Wick, KYTC. Travis Thompson, KYTC, Super 5. Okay, welcome. And uh, mm -hmm. everyone is welcome. Let's get uh, moving to item number two. As a joint meeting, this is a TPCC minute approval. I made a motion from one of those members. <coughs> need a motion from the TTC. I have a motion. I have a second. second. Motion and second. All in favor, aye. 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 Thank you. Item number three. This is the minute approval of the TPC meeting. I need a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor of the TCP, uh, TPC, <laughs> the minutes release. They say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Item number four, public comment period. Any one wish to address this board? <coughs> Hearing none, we'll move to number five, public meeting report. Ashley? On November 30th, we attended the One Southern Indiana ACE Awards, and then again on uh, December 6th, we were in One Southern Indiana for the and tomorrow we'll be going to the Bullitt County Chamber of Commerce Finance. Any questions? <clears throat> Item number f uh, six, Highway Safety Improvement Program Funding. A uh, Andy. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what you're getting ready to see is just going to match what was in the, uh, the packet. There's going to be a, a table that shows uh, the priorities for the for Indiana only for the HSIP, Highway Safety Improvement Program funds. These are the safety projects that we recently prioritized. Oh, uh, well, that's coming up. Okay, here we go. Uh, we received applications for a total of eight projects um, from our Indiana LPAs uh, three from Clarksville, two from Floyd County, and then three from New Albany. Um, and the call for projects was for a total of uh, well, two years worth of funding at 676000 So about $1.35 million was the total dollar amount that we were looking to program here. Uh, we received applications in a total of, I think it was about $1.58 million. And so the group of LPA, Indiana LPAs and KIPPA staff met back in October to prioritize these and to program these. And at that time, um, City of New Albany was doing one of their projects. Uh, there's, there's, so there's an eighth, eighth project that would have been applied for here that happened to be a emergency vehicle preemption. So New Albany kept their two projects here, two for Floyd County and the same thing, all three for Clarksville. So that, that brought us down to that total 1.1 million right here. And we programmed them in, these into two years. The issue in Indiana remains uh, we have to program um, to the dollar, I guess you'd say, um, for each of our programs. So we're going to have a, a bit of a surplus here, 5,000 in fiscal year 19, <coughs> uh, a greater surplus of about 200,000 in fiscal year 2020. 
The 5,000 will be absorbed by the other programs, most likely, so the SDP dollars, the CMAC dollars, etc. At 200,000, we will find a good use for that, I promise you, in the next year or so. Um, I can speak about any of the projects, or any of the project sponsors can speak about it if we, if we need to. Um, but I can answer any questions. Uh, again, these are, these are simply the safety projects. All, all eight projects were approved by NDOT. NDOT and the Highway Safety Advisory Committee in Indiana, they look at applications for this program, and they give it a thumbs up or thumbs down, all, all eight, certainly all seven. Um, got a thumbs up, we had to get a bit of a clarification on one of the projects for Clarksville. Um, and, and then we've done that, they've, they've, they've provided a letter that, that NDOT was happy with. Um, all of these projects will be included in the upcoming TIP amendment. We'll hear a little bit about them here shortly. And I need to talk to Brittany after the meeting about getting the PIPs, because I think we have all the other PIPs. Floyd County PIPs are good, and the New Albany PIPs are good as well. So uh, we just need to make a quick change to a couple of uh, Brittany's PIPs, New, uh, Clarksville PIPs, and we should be good to go. Um, so uh, requesting action for approval of the PTCC, I suppose, first, so that they can recommend it to the PTC. Okay. First of all, any questions? Yep. Yes. Just a simple, I think simple question. So NDOT um, screens the projects to determine if they're eligible for the funding. That's the thumbs up, thumbs down you mentioned. Um, and, and so then, the, I'm just curious, the, the committee that met here, um, do, you, do you have some, uh, I mean, do they use a criteria for <coughs> so many accidents? Yeah, a few years ago we created, we created a, um, well, NDOT mandated that all the MPOs in Indiana create a local selection procedures for the HSIP program specifically. And so I said that NDOT approved it. That, 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 those, um, those procedures say that KIPP to staff will approve it kind of at the local level first. It took a little bit off their back, but it really didn't take much off the NDOT's back. Um, so it was approved here locally. We sent all eight to NDOT. They approved it there. Um, <coughs> the first priority of, in these procedures that is, is uh, the proven safety benefit, which ones would have the highest safety benefit. And it also includes things like uh, passage. I think other uh, because there's a signal preemption there, they just weren't sold on it yet. Especially, it'd just be on one cord or two, so it'd be a lot of uh, a lot of cost. It's an expensive project too. That involved putting these emitters or some some sort of equipment in each one of their emergency vehicles, and that was $2,500 a piece or something. Times a couple hundred, uh, hundred vehicles. I don't remember what the number was. It was, it was a lot just in that. And then you just put stuff on the signals as well. Yeah, it's um, a much larger project than what they had requested funding for. Yeah, not not too much unlike I guess the way the uh, signal preemption will work on the picture by twenty four. So yes, we have those procedures in place. In this case, it was simply um, we just needed to get rid of one to fit to fit the funding that we had at this time. Thank you. Any other questions? I would entertain a motion for the TTCC, please. So move. So move. All right. We have a second. I have a motion. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I also need a motion from TPC for it. So I have a motion, second? Second. I have a second. Any questions? All in favor, aye? Aye. 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 Motion for carry. Thank you so much. I'll give you seven quarterly review process. Nick? I want to get into some weeds on this, but try to go as fast as I can because we know we have a lot of items going on today. Um, the quarterly review process for KIPP the dedicated funds, uh, for any new members, uh, these KIPP the dedicated funds are those ones that the PPC has the ultimate authority for awarding. Unlike um, probably the majority of our funds that are in our TIP are actually awarded by uh, KYTC or through NDOT. Um, in some cases through discretionary funding at the federal level, but uh, today we're speaking just about the MPO dedicated funds. Um, and it's only for informational purposes today. Uh, the program management process, which is kind of how all this started, was approved uh, last August in 2016 uh, by the TPC. It outlined um, and provided lots of rules and uh, structure for how we're going to manage our gifted dedicated projects going forward in terms of how you apply for the funds, 
um, how they're awarded, um, and also how what you have to do to kind of report on the status of these projects. Since that time, we kind of had a slow rollout um, of this process, and so back in January of 2017, the staff implemented uh, initial elements of the PMP, and that initial effort we went through was to make available about seven million dollars worth of funding um, through the uh, various. Uh, mostly STP program, um, I think there were some few TAP dollars in there as well. Um, so that kind of kicked things off. Uh, new projects were selected for funding, cost increases were also approved. Then in September, um, TPC started approving their first and moved us forward. So the key steps kind of in the entire process are, are three. One is the, the applying for funds, two, the awarding of funds, and three, the reporting. When it comes to applying for funds, the project sponsors are going to be the ones responsible for doing this, of course. Um, in the past, we, uh, for FTP program, we didn't even have a, a formal application that uh, decisions were made a little more informally with a, with a group of um, Kentucky sponsors and then the <coughs> EDM sponsors. So now we have a little more structure to this process, and so there are applications for when you want to uh, uh, shift a phase of your project when you want to request an increase um, for a current project where a certain phase may have gone over budget or, um, or the design uh, was completed and now you realize the cost is much higher. And then there's an opportunity for both new projects and projects with unfunded phases to be funded. So there's three application types. I'm going to get into that a little more. I think some of you are already aware of this. And please stop me if any of this sounds completely foreign and confusing. Um, so phase shifts uh, will essentially be accepted every quarter. Um, we don't anticipate that, you, that everyone's going to want to do that every quarter. Um, cost increases and pro new project applications, those would only be uh, submitted when there are funds available. Kind of common sense there. After uh, project sponsors apply for whatever funds are available, may, have been, may be available that quarter, uh, we move over into the award process. Here, there's kind of three groups that are involved. One is the project working group. Uh, that's a nine-member group um, that would only become involved if the number of request, the amount of requests for funding was higher than the funds we had available. So, if we had 100,000 available, seven projects submit costs, and the total is 150, we'd ask the project working group to get together and review those uh, projects and uh, make a recommendation to TPC on how those uh, funds should be awarded. Uh, so a nine-member group is made up of a representative from NDOT, KYTC, Global Metro, TARC, and then KIPTA. And then there are four rotating members, two from uh, Indiana and two from Kentucky, both of whom have TPC voting status. So once the project working group makes their recommendation, that is then forwarded on to the TTCC, uh, who would then have the opportunity to um, approve that recommendation and send it on to TPC, or they can modify it, tweak the projects, and send a revised recommendation on to the TPC. Um, when it comes to awards, uh, there's no guarantee that there's going to be available funding every quarter, but we anticipate that at least once a year there will be funds available either for cost increases or for brand new projects or unfunded phases. Once your project has been awarded funds, that's when you become responsible as the project said later in the presentation. Um, and this report, uh, basically, you'd be telling us, hey, is that project or is that phase of that project on schedule? When do you anticipate those funds being authorized, which for us is extremely important because it tells us that what we programmed in our budget, our TIP, uh, is actually going to be expended by the project sponsor in a timely manner. So um, that's the reporting cycle, and these are kind of the three key um, uh, steps along the process. Speaking a little more to applications, um, KIPP the staff will notify all project sponsors ahead of every quarter in regards to the schedule and also how much funding, if any, will be available. That way you'll know whether you need to get ready for a project uh, a new project that potentially cost increase application. If there are no funds available, the only thing you'd be able to do would be to shift the phase out. Um, again, anytime a, a project or phase of a project is being delayed, that's the time when you want to apply for that. 
Um, there are rules in place. We really um, would like to see no more than two uh, phase shifts, um, two fiscal year shifts uh, for each phase, but there's exceptions for all of these rules as well. Um, when it comes to cost increases, uh, when a project needs additional funding to complete that, that project is when you would submit that application. I think several of you guys have submitted those in the past in terms of project sponsors here in this room. Um, again, that's going to occur at least once per year for both Indiana and Kentucky. <coughs> and then, of course, we have our new project applications or projects that have unfunded phases. So if you've got funding for right-of-way and utilities but not construction, you would still be considered more like a new project. You'd be competing with a larger group of folks versus a cost increase. And um, for any exceptions, whether it's going above 20% cost increases um, or having more than two uh, shifts of a phase uh, in the lifetime, applicants will have to submit uh, an exception letter. This has already been done in the past um, by a few applicants or project <coughs> sponsors, and those requests have to be explicitly approved by CPC. So that's just a little nuance there about the application process. Um, moving into the funding awards, um, there's four entities that have a role or a hand in this, the first being KIPTA. When those applications come in, staff will review them, um, mostly for completeness, um, but also to determine whether the request for funding is greater than we have available. If it's not, then we'll, <coughs> we'll basically make a recommendation to TPC to fund all of the projects. However, if the requests for funds are greater than that, then we have to, again, convene the working group. The working group would develop a recommendation, like I mentioned before, criteria that they would use is spelled out in the program management process that was approved last year. It includes things like the timely uh, delivery of uh, projects in the past, uh, potentially a project's contribution to KIPTA's goals and objectives and our performance targets. Um, but there's several other criteria that would go into that decision-making process. Again, that would be forwarded on to TTCC, um, who would consider that recommendation, make tweaks if, if need be, and then send that on to the TPC. Uh, for final approval of those funding awards. And then, of course, they have the uh, ability to approve or disapprove of any exceptions to these rules. Finally, getting into the progress reports. Uh, starting this quarter, which we're calling the second quarter of uh, uh, fiscal year 2018, uh, January to March timeframe, uh, project sponsors will begin to name <coughs> the progress reports. For any project that has current funds, uh, current uh, MPO dedicated funds uh, moving forward. So if you had get the dedicated funds back in 2016, we're not going to ask you to continue reporting on that project because in our minds it's been, at least that phase has been completed. Uh, these reports will need to be submitted um, for all MPO dedicated projects unless that project is A, uh, open to the public, uh, two, uh, no longer receives get the dedicated funds, or three, have been completely removed from the tip. Um, KIP, the staff is going to try to ease the administrative burden by uh, pre-filling as much of the uh, quarterly report forms out as possible to make it <coughs> a little bit easier, um, but also to make sure everyone's working from the right schedule and funding amounts and, and whatnot. Um, the fields that are going to be required of you, which I'll go to and get into a little detail here in a minute, are four. There's basically, what's the current status of that phase? Is it on schedule to be um, authorized or obligated that fiscal year? Behind schedule or behind schedule. Uh, we want to know the date when funds have been authorized um, or the date when funds are anticipated or estimated to be authorized. The amount of funds, if that, if that phase has been authorized, what was the total amount? We want to be able to compare what we programmed in the budget to what you guys authorized um, in your funding agreement. And then finally, uh, there's an opportunity to let us know if as part of this project you also submitted an application for a cost increase or a phase shift. That way, this one report has all the information that staff needs, but also more importantly, to be able to provide kind of an update to TPC members and the general public about how well uh, project sponsors are using um, the KIP to dedicated funds that we have uh, in our region. All right, next I'm going to just briefly uh, talk about this form. This, this form was provided as an attachment to the meeting packet. Um, this is kind of an example of, of a project. 
And I'll kind of run through it from top to bottom, just so everyone's kind of comfortable with it. Um, the first, uh, from top to bottom, we've got the project sponsor here. In this case, we'll call it City of Test. The project name is Central Avenue, and the description is to widen Central Avenue from two to three lanes with the center turn lane. Next, we've got the KIPTA ID, which in this case is 3000, a state ID, which is XX, and then a funding program, which in this case is Surface Transportation Program, or STP. All of the information in these white fields are going to be filled in for you guys. We're just asking you everyone to fill out the yellow column, or the yellow field, I should say. The middle section of that form there, reading left to right, we've got the phase, uh, federal funds that have been programmed to that phase, and the fiscal year in which those funds are programmed. All that will be pre-filled out. <coughs> what we're going to ask you guys is to fill out the current status of that phase, whether funds um, have been authorized, and when they will be authorized. Um, so let's take a look real quick here. For, the, for this project, the design phase had $250,000 programmed for it. Uh, the sponsor indicated that it's on schedule, and that makes sense because the funds were actually authorized back in July of 2016 at the uh, exact amount of which they were programmed. If you move down a couple lines, say to utilities, you can see there was $450,000 programmed for fiscal year 2018. Their sponsor is indicating that's behind schedule and that they don't es estimate the uh, authorization of funds until January of 2020, which would be uh, fiscal year 2020. Yeah. So then moving down towards the bottom, you can see there's a line item where they say, was phase shift application submitted for this quarter? And they're indicating yes to us. So that basically kind of wraps everything up, tells us what's going on with the project and that we should anticipate a request to push that project back over. And then there's an opportunity. <coughs> provide some notes and comments down at the bottom if need be. So that's the uh, quarterly progress report in a nutshell. Um, here we've got the schedule for the upcoming quarter. And this was also sent out uh, as part of the mailing packet. So the first step is this Friday, uh, we will send myself and Amanda Deftry will send out an email, uh, one of us will send out an email to all project sponsors in regards to this, this schedule. And we'll also be telling you that there are no funds available this quarter, so we won't be expecting any new project applications or cost increases. Um, but you have an opportunity to submit phase shifts, and if you need to do that, we'd ask you guys to submit those by December 29th. Uh, the project working group will not meet because there are no funds to be awarded uh, this go around. Um, but we will ask that quarterly progress reports be submitted in the middle of January with our quarterly review meeting of all the project sponsors the following week. Um, we will send out those project, uh, those uh, quarterly progress reports to all the sponsors uh, sometime early next week. So you guys have about a month uh, to work on those. For anybody that does request phase shifts and needs to move uh, a phase out, uh, you will also then need to submit a PIF that says, hey, we're moving the design phase out from this year to this year so that we can update our budget be able to tell the state, hey, we're not going to, that project's not going to go this year, it's going to go next year. For any um, changes that are made, but just as a kind of summary to the committees, we will provide a presentation regardless of whether there's any cost increases or phase shifts. And our hope is that we can kind of tell you guys how much progress is being made on specific pro projects, which I think would interest you guys a whole lot more than the presentation does today. Um, if any, uh, Approvals are needed. Uh, we'll meet with TPC February 22nd. And after that, we're going to post a summary of kind of everything that's happened onto our website so the public can go see that and be able to track progress of, of NPO dedicated funds. Uh, I know this is a ton of information. Um, all of the information, the forms, the guides, this presentation are going to be made available on, our, on this uh, web link. This is our tip page. Um, and I will send out this link to everybody in the email as well, so that you guys have as much information as possible. Um, uh, another FYI, we created a presentation for how to complete a project information form. I know there's new project sponsors and whatnot. Um, John Callahan and Metro staff, he asked us to, myself and Amanda, to come give a presentation about that last week. And so we're going to make that presentation available on the web as well, just for any new project sponsors. That's all I have. You can always contact myself or Amanda Deffridge with any questions you have or comments. Any questions? Thanks, Jake. All right. Thank you.
Well, real far. Item number nine is 2018 uh, 2021 Transportation Improvement Program Amendment. changes to projects in the current TIP. Um, there are three types of uh, actions that typically require a TIP amendment. Um, and I'm going to go through this real quickly. One would be if you're planning to remove a project from the TIP, and that has to go through our amendment process, um, as opposed to our administrative modification process, which is kind of handled internally. The second would be adding projects that are non-exempt. Uh, the examples of these are Brand new roadways that don't exist currently. Uh, new interchanges, uh, reconfiguring of interchanges, adding or removing travel lanes, turn lanes, turning bays, those sort of things that change the network, <coughs> the roadway network, and how people drive and the capacity of roadways. Um, that's not an exhaustive list, but that is the primary ones, the primary types of uh, changes or new projects that would have to go through this amendment process. Um, and then the third would be making substantial changes to existing projects such as incorporating one of those, um, those lines uh, listed above. So say you were originally planning to just resurface a road, and then you decide, oh, no, let's go ahead and widen that road from three to five lanes. Well, that's a substantial change. That would have to, be, uh, that would have to go through our amendment process. Um, and then, of course, any projects that are significantly increasing the amount of federal funds that, you, uh, that were originally planned for that project would also need to. So those are the three types of changes um, that typically we expect uh, to go through the amendment process. Um, and here, just as a quick schedule, a reminder of uh, what we have coming up. So by the 22nd, project sponsors need to submit that project information form, which I mentioned before, if you are planning to make a change uh, through the amendment process from December 22nd to January 31st. Staff will review those projects, analyze them for air quality and other uh, benefits. And I think um, <coughs> uh, we will be sending out the uh, draft amendment in February 14th, 2018 to the general public to allow them to comment um, 15 days. And then TPC will also have a, another 15-day period in which they can um, review the document prior to TTC recommendation on March 14th and TPC approval on March 22nd. Afterwards, we'll send that document on to the feds for their review, and they have up to 60 days to do so. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to take them right now. Otherwise, we'll be sending out probably an email um, in the next day or so, just kind of a reminder about this. Question. Yeah, questions, comments? Thank you. All right, thank you, Nick. Item number 10 of the economic forecast. Andy, you got this? I do. All right. I don't have a presentation for this one. Um, but many of you all know that uh, Lori Kelsey, she just recently retired back in November. So uh, one of Lori's uh, main um, task here at Kipton, which she was certainly an expert in, was anything that related to demographics or uh, socioeconomic forecasting, you know, the numbers of population, uh, jobs, and households in our region. And so uh, we are truly going to miss Lori on this step, but um, what I'm here to talk about today <coughs> should be, or likely will be, the first of probably several of the next few months as we embark on this process of, of finalizing our socioeconomic forecast. Um, these, these are the forecasts that will feed the long-range plan update. So, um, again, I'll, I'll probably be up here, or myself or Sarah Bear will be up here in front of you all over the next few months. And, and even more than that, um, uh, 
Um, we're going to be coming out to see you all and, and, and asking questions and looking for feedback <coughs> from, from virtually every person at the table here uh, at some point in the future. Um, this is the first full-scale update of these numbers in a lot of years, so so it's, it, it's a pretty big deal what we're doing here. And this, this really has, it really does impact truly everything we do. A lot of the framework for what we will be asking you about it will look a little bit like what we would that we're going to include in our travel demand model. So don't be scared when we come talk to you about it. But, but we'll try to break it down in, in, in simplified terms. That's that's what we, this data is what we feed to our model, but not only is it something that we use for our model, it's something that we use for all of our assumptions for our long-range planning. So, so it is a really big deal. So um, like I said, we'll be in touch soon. Um, we're gonna use a lot of data sources, several, most of which are public data sources. Since it's ACS, uh, employment data sources that are out there that are public, but we've also purchased some here at KIPTA that, that um, that will help us along the way too. So, so we'll be seeing some of that. We'll be happy to share some of that to the extent that we can. Um, we'd be also looking when we come out for feedback. If you all have any good ideas and, and good um, um, methods that you all use, or maybe in the next few weeks, maybe after this presentation, you can point us to you know a perfect um, a document like a, a recent comp plan update. We have most of them. Don't get me wrong. But if there's something out there that exists in your county or your jurisdiction, please please make uh, let it be known to us. And so we'll use that before we come and talk to people. Um, what Sarah and myself and Larry and some others will, are working on final, fi finalizing now will be our base year data. So we're going to be, we're going to be, 2015 is our base year for our model. It's going to be a good basis for what we're going to build from. Uh, so what we'll be showing you here in a month or two's time will be the growth, the expected growth from 2015 to the horizon year of our long range plan, which will be 2040. So that's what we'll be asking for feedback on is the 2040 numbers. Um, and again, we're going, to be, we're, we're going to be breaking it down to really small levels, these TAZs, traffic analysis zones. That's the level we need it in our model. So we'll try to, we'll try to know <coughs> it in different ways that might make more sense to you since it's tracked. Uh, if we're going to a given county, maybe in, maybe in Bullitt County, we can talk about Shepherdsville and Mount Washington and Hillview and Lebanon Junction and the county at large, et cetera. Um, Clark County, for instance, is probably going to be particularly tricky. We've got a lot of jurisdictions there that, would, that, would, that are going to be in play. Uh, to, on the other end of the spectrum, perhaps Oldham County, we're just, we'll probably just come talk to you, Jim, and then perhaps somebody else in the county office and, and talk about, um, you know, what, what we have in store and basically say, hey, does this look good? Does this make sense? Are you happy with that? Is this something you can live with? That kind of thing. Um, Schedule-wise, don't have anything to provide to you today, but please uh, pay attention to your emails because Sarah or I will be getting in touch with you. Hopefully, maybe by the next time, Come to this room, so sometime in January, and we'll be looking to schedule a meeting um, at your all's place, most likely. Um, probably, you know, probably try to give two weeks notice, two or three weeks notice, and, and we'll try to we'll try to be as much as we can, hoping to wrap up the 2040 forecasting. I'd like to say we've had it by the end of January, but probably some point in February is when we're going to be looking at wrapping this up. Hope so, hope so, and it, because we, because the outcomes and the outputs of what we're doing here. As I mentioned earlier, it truly does feed a lot of other things along our path to the long range plan update. So I'd be happy to answer any questions either now, an email, phone call. In that process, in the past, we've actually adjusted the TAZs. Are you going to be doing that at all so. based on development patterns or whatever? Absolutely. So, how so. do we prepare for that in advance, or do we just wait for the conversation? or? Can I mean uh, yeah I mean I, I I we're not adjusting the boundaries. No, we're not adjusting boundaries. Oh, okay, going to be set. Okay, because in the now, past, now, you know, long so time. a different exercise. The oh. question we'll be asking, and let's use Oldham County as a good example. So, so, so the the data that we will have says that in 2015 the population of Oldham County is what 60,000, some some mm -hmm. range. In the the state the Texas State Data Center would probably be the, the county level total that we would use as a projection for 2040. That says something like there will be. I don't know the numbers, 80,000, so a growth of 20,000. So the main question we'll be asking is, where do we distribute that 20,000 additional people in that 2040 context, looking, looking out into the future? And the same, same sort of type of question will be done with the, popu uh, the employment numbers. The employment numbers are going to be tricky. They're going right. to be trickier, and they always will be trickier because the data's not as good. We don't have that solid base to build them up. But yes, we will be saying, which TAZs get the most additional employment. Maybe we can do that at, at the county level, we would do it maybe at the census tract, you know, of which there are, I don't know, a dozen in, in Oldham County, for instance, mm -hmm. distribute them that way. But we will we will be coming to you all with a draft version of that. And so we'll be saying, does this make sense? Here's what we did. We'll be saying, here's what we did. 
Does that make sense to you? And would you like to make any changes? And we'd be happy to accommodate folks if not all of them. Um, well, we can we'll show you what, you what we think is in that particular TAZ. You can say, well, no, it's not really there. It's over here on the other side of this railroad track or the other side of this mountain. Okay. Well, we get that draft before you come, a week or two before, so we can look at it. Because when you break it down that way and look at employment or housing, it becomes a pretty good sized deal, especially for Bullock because of the very nature of the county. Right, right. So we're gonna be, we're gonna we'll we'll be finalizing our base year, and what what I, what we're working on now is trying to get in a good a good um, good way to present it. That's, that's the most understandable. Is that is that a table? Probably not. A table is going to be a lot. We've got. Just for reference, we've got almost 1,000 of these TAZs. I think it's 983 TAZs. So that's the whole region is broken down 983 <coughs> ways. That's pretty small. Um, so um, we will try to break it down in, in, in bigger chunks and when, we're, when we're doing this. But to give, you know, Bullock County's going to have 100 TAZs or some number. And so that would be tricky to look at at a table. We need to put that on a map and, and do the best we can to make the most effective presentation to make that process when we come see you guys. Uh, make that process last an hour and a half, not all day. Yes. Any questions anymore? We look forward to hearing from you. Then. Okay. okay. But item number 11 is Kentucky Indiana Transportation and uh, Excellent Kite Award. This is Larry. Jeff. Yes, sir. For those who did not attend the uh, November TPC meeting or have not heard, um, KIPTA, this is the third annual kite award that we've uh, staff and, and TPC members and some TTCC members uh, nominate projects. We had um, seven projects nominated. We had three finalists. The winner this year was the New Albany one-way to two-way uh, conversion, the downtown street grid, which included a, a uh, road diet on State Street. So it's one big project that had a lot of impact in downtown New Albany. So that was the winner. We had uh, the Lavello Bike Share Program, Louisville Metro, was a finalist. And the Fairdale Roundabout, which was a joint project between KYTC and Louisville Metro, was also a finalist. And, uh, I'd like to congratulate all the winners and keep up the good work. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 12, the TTCC Committee of 2018 Office of <laughs> Well, I, I'll do that. Um, what we'd like to do. We, we haven't gone strictly by the bylaws the last few years. We thought we might do something different. Go by the bylaws. <laughs> the, uh, the bylaws for the TCC state that a nominating committee is supposed to be um, structured in the November or December meeting, put together a slate of um, officers for a uh, vote in the January meeting. So what we'd like to do today is get uh, two of the TTCC members who are in attendance here today, or if you'd like to volunteer someone who is not in attendance, uh, to be part of that nominating committee. And along with the TTC chair, Mr. O'Brien, they'll come up with a, uh, a slate of um, officers for the committee to vote on in January. Okay. Do we have two volunteers? We have one. And it doesn't have to be a voting member. It can also be an advisory member. Okay. We have one volunteer. I need one more then. Okay. You got those duly noted. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good deal. Thank you. I think that concludes that portion then. And I'm number 13, other business. Larry, we have other business. We have a few items that we need to discuss. Um, you can send those around that direction. Mr. 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 Larry, Larry, the Indiana. Yes, it's around. For anyone who's interested, yeah. I don't have enough copies for everyone, but You're fun. Um, several months ago, work? I was approved <laughs> by the city of Jeffersonville, Clark County, uh, 1SI, which is the Chamber of Commerce in Southern Indiana, and the Southern River Ridge uh, Commerce Center, and the Southern Indiana uh, Tourism Bureau to help with nominating the section of I-265, or State Road 265 in Indiana, from the Indiana State Line over to uh, State Road 62 as a scenic byway. This was um, initiated, first of all, because there is, a, there is a tug of war going on over there right now over billboards. Three billboards have already been built in this corridor, southbound, 
as we come toward the bridge. Four more are scheduled to they have been terminated. So what I did is I wrote this letter, <coughs> sent it to the commissioner of uh, highways and dot, which is the first step. Uh, we did because the process to nominate and to select these scenic byways is something from back in the middle 90s. Um, not a lot has been done since then. So the process <coughs> itself was a little vague for NDOT. It certainly was for us. So the first step I took was to do this. Um, since then, they've dusted off all their regulations and kind of convened some of the people that might be involved with it again. And now they want a formal application. Well, I personally don't want to take that on myself. I'd like the PPC to approve <coughs> it, uh, making this nomination. We don't have any responsibility as far as that's concerned. What happens from this point is we show support. All the groups that have already been involved, plus some others, have uh, suggested they will also, also support us as well as some elected officials in Southern mm -hmm. Indiana. But what happens next is NDOT will take it on themselves to designate this as a state scenic byway. The national program is in suspended for a while now, so we're not looking to go to the, the national designation. But the Ohio River Scenic Byway covers three states. It's Ohio, Indiana, North. <coughs> They've been in place for a long time. They were one of the first ones to get designation. They also have national designation. What we think we can do is to get this short section included as part of that <coughs> Ohio River Scenic Byway. For some of the reasons that I detailed in the letter, but for the main reason, <coughs> Old River Road in Kentucky is already on the scenic byway system, state scenic byway. The Ohio River Scenic Byway in Indiana is State Road 62. So it's a connection between the two existing scenic byways. We've uh, gotten an indication from the commissioner's office that they might be favorable for that approach. So what I would like to ask from you is permission for me to actually fill out this formal application for this designation. <coughs> this, uh, TBC can take this action. It doesn't necessarily have to go through TCC. But we can do it both ways if you like. But certainly TPC, I would like to have TPC permission to, TPC. to, to make this application. Permission to make the application? Yes, sir. <coughs> Questions? On, on, on behalf of all those groups. Questions? Does that need a motion? Yes, sir. Second. Need a second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Who is a second? Jim? No discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries to for you to take your application. Thank you very much. You keep us informed, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and then is, we have one more item after. Yes. Uh, another see. item. We've also been approached by several people, <coughs> some elected officials and some of the representatives here from from Bullock County, there has been discussion also with Spencer County and, uh, and Oldham County about a new route that would be outside of the Snyder Freeway, substantially outside the Snyder Freeway, that looking forward in the future, 20, 40, 50 years from now, would be the logical place for our community to grow and for the communities along that route to grow basically together, Mount Washington, Shepherdsville, uh, Taylorsville, LaGrange, all the smaller communities that are outside there. Some work has already been done. Uh, Mr. Griffey, Mr. Snyder, if either of you would like to address the group about the, the project. Yeah, we can. Thanks, Larry. We, uh, John and I, John Snyder, who's now on the KIPTA board, uh, is our executive director of uh, uh, economic development. Uh, he and I had lunch one day, and this all kind of sprang out of, out of two separate incidents, two separate things that are going on. In our <coughs> One is on Highway 44 in Boyd County. Uh, most of the people that have been in here have heard some horror stories about 44. It's the main thoroughfare through Boyd County. It's too small. We can't expand it. We can't do anything. So John and I decided, instead of talking about it all the time, uh, let's find a different route. 
Uh, so we started to look for a different route that would parallel 44 from 65 into Mount Washington. Uh, we took that plan, talked to uh, Representative Weber and Tipton, uh, who are a couple of our representatives in the House, uh, and they came up with the idea of expanding this all the way to 65. John and I took it to Frankfurt, uh, discussed it with uh, a number of legislators, uh, and it grew to go all the way to 71. So this, this road has really grown. Part of the, the reason why we wanted to do it is we wanted to take the pressure off of 44, so it was, it was basically a Bullock County project, but it also came from Emily's numbers. We took the numbers that she did probably over a year ago in a presentation oh, here. We look at the growth, and Bullock County, we, we will be over 100,000 people probably within the next three years. Uh, Spencer County will grow to 125%, uh, over 125% growth. Shelby County's growth. Uh, all the way into Oldham County. These are the fastest growing areas. It's, as we were saying, as Andy was pointing out, where, where are these people going to go? Well, these people are coming. We have to have some infrastructure. So we've taken that to, to Frankfurt, to the legislature. Uh, we are trying to get it in the governor's budget. We need planning money. The, the planning money, and it's probably going to be about a million dollars. Uh, Representative Tipton asked us to come here first before we go into the governor. The governor has seen this plan. His, his, he's, he's aware of this. Most of the folks in Frankfurt are aware of this. We have not gotten any negative feedback on this at all. Uh, so where, where we are with this is we're coming here to see what money is available through KIPTA that we can tell the governor to put it in his budget. And the reason we're trying to do this now is that we are trying to get this in the state of the Commonwealth address. We want to do it during this session. This is a, this is a project that is right in the governor's wheelhouse. Uh, this covers fast growing areas. It covers a lot of areas. It's not just those four counties. We're looking at Nelson County getting benefit, Jefferson County getting benefit, um, it, going all the way up, uh, Carrollton, uh, Carroll County, you know, Owen County, all the way up in, into that area as well. Uh, so we're here asking to see if there's any money uh, that we can go and just tell them that yes, there is a certain amount here. Uh, there is going to be some matching. Bullock County is willing to put the matching money up with this. We think the other counties will get on board when they see this. Uh, this is really a game changer for this entire region is what we're looking at. John's got some more specs on, on some of the places that this takes pressure off of. So that's you know, it. it's, it's kind of interesting when you looked at the... Um, plan that was put out by highways on their priorities, this probably released four of the top five of those group in the Louisville area. But just to name a few, release congestion, 265 area, the Ford area, which can have three to four mile backups every night. Reduces the amount of traffic at the 265, I-65 interchange, which is very dangerous. I think we all travel those roads all the time and know that. And the response we've had from transportation, there's very little way to fix that at the current time. Really congestion on 265 in the area of Taylorsville exit, which can also have three, four mile backups. Remove traffic off 265, which are coming off 64, plan to go south to Nashville. Takes all that, which is probably 10 to 15 percent of that traffic off 265. Provide additional access to Mount Washington Shepherdsville, which is a real reason we started on the barroom napkin, uh, looking at what we could do. Um, it also connects uh, some of the industrial areas in all of our area, all those four or five counties, uh, better to north-south flow factors. Improve a great deal more land for development in the area, which uh, if you talk to Taylorsville and <coughs> other counties, that um, they're having a hard time uh, getting transportation in and out. People are coming, but there's no way in and out, and that's why you've got the tremendous backup. And I'm sure Oldham and the rest of them all have, we all have the same problem. We're, using two lane roads or even four lanes at some point in time and they're so jam packed you can't get anywhere. Uh, the number of wrecks caused by congestion on all these highways is getting tremendous. This is not a next year project. Do not think about this is going to happen. It won't happen in my lifetime for sure. But if we had done some planning in Bullock County on 44, 20 years ago, Larry, you mentioned that, uh, we wouldn't have the pro part of the problems we have today. And this is looking forward Mainly, a lot of us will be looking forward to our children being able to drive on this, not necessarily us. Because even if you started today, it's probably a 15-year project. If you start 
because of dollars. But the other half of that is, having spent a little bit of time in Washington, there's going to be stimulus <coughs> money at some point in time, and if we don't have plans in place that are shovel ready, we'll never get the stimulus money. We should have plans ready to go to start making this happen. The price of tag on this is developed by the highway uh, or transportation department is basically around 1.3 million by the time you're done to do it all the way to Oldham. It's about a million to do it Simpsonville area to I-65. We agree we probably ought to do the planning on the whole mm -hmm. shebang to start out with so we know what we're talking about and where we're going. Um, Keith and I are a little bit prejudiced because we're looking at Bullock County um, to try and solve some of our problems because we have no other way to solve it uh, on 44. So we're a little bit prejudiced in what we do um, and how we go about it. But we think that it's important enough that we're willing to put county money in to match. If you all come up with $100,000 out of your federal matching, we'll, we'll come up with the 20 some way or another and make this get started because it's about our future. It's not about our past. And we think once we get this started, the other counties will probably jump in on this as well. Again, you're looking at the benefit this is a huge benefit, and as John said, we, and this did start when he says a, a bar napkin. It literally was a bar napkin that we started drawing this out on because we are at a point, and I'm sure most of the people in this room, if you hear from constituents, if we would have planned better 20 years ago, we wouldn't have half the problems that we didn't create that we're trying to fix. That seems to be the norm in Bullock County. I know we've got Mayor Armstrong here, and we, he Mayor, runs Hockenberry. A, Mayor Hockenberry is here. They run into the same things, so we're trying to to alleviate this. Um, it, it it's going to be a, a great benefit to uh, Tom was calling it the Spencer uh, the Spencer Highway or the Spencer Corridor. We're not doing that since we started it in Bullet. Bullet gets the name. That Spencer County does not, but it will be. It'll be a huge benefit to Spencer County. It, it's again, as Emily told us last year, her numbers aren't lying. There's going to be a 125 percent increase. There's no way to get in and out of there except Taylorsville Road. And if you go there at five o'clock, you better pack a lunch because you're going to be there a while. So again, we're we're looking at this. As John said, he and I are never going to probably drive on this, but. We do know that there's money, we believe that there's money in the governor's budget that could at least start to study, which we understand we have to do the study first before we can get this thing started. And this is the place we have to come to so that we can call Representative Weber and Representative Tipton and say, Kipta has X amount of dollars, now we can go, and John and I can go and sit down with the governor and get the rest of it to get this thing started. I don't know how much uh, employment there is over the 245 exchange. But just getting that traffic out of all that employment over there, right. you know how many are employed there, right off oh, gosh. in that area? It's 245? Yeah, at, uh, you were the development, Flynn Brothers, all the development over there. Cedar Grove? Cedar Grove. Yeah, Cedar Grove. Uh, today we have about 21,000 people. That's why we've gotten a new interchange. And they come out on 265. Those it's the only place they got to go to. Yeah. And they distribute everywhere. And it's every afternoon, every morning that goes in and out of there. It's, it's impossible. Well, and just, again, just as a, a side note, coming out of Mount Washington, driving to Shepherdsville every day to have to get on 44, uh, if you catch it at the wrong time and you get behind a school bus, a, a, a tractor trailer, a uh, garbage truck, uh, a 15-minute drive is about 45. This <laughs> Selfishly, I would just take a turn left and get on this and be in Shepherdsville in about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's what we're looking at. That's just, that's, that's just our county, but that would also be for all of these other areas as well. And, and, and just the housing, the industrial, everything that would open up for this land as we, and, and John's been able to get a, a, a rough map drawn out. Um, and I'm sorry I didn't bring it. Yeah, yeah we, I apologize. We, but it, it's not the plan, but it gives us some idea. And there's so much open land here. This is where people are going to have to go. We know the people are coming. This is where they're going to go, and this opens that up for them. But you, now you said you didn't have a plan that we could put up on the screen. No, I didn't. I'm sorry, I didn't know we were making a presentation. Did you make known or let I can send a copy. Yeah, yeah we have a map. Yeah. I don't know if that map is. <laughs> may not be. Yeah. Okay. 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 That'd be something I'd be interested in taking because I know in, in Little Town 64 and, and the other. Larry, we'll send a copy. Yeah, I think I've got a copy that's. 
it down and, small and enough to send it. want to be very clear. Can you send us one? John and I have I've also met right with, yeah. we've met with, with folks, we've presented this in Frankfurt twice. We've also met with our, our, uh, uh, our U.S. representative. We've met with representatives from Senator McConnell, uh, Senator Paul, uh, uh, Representative Guthrie, Representative mm -hmm. Massey, mm -hmm. and, and, and Representative Barr. They've all been in a room. They've seen this. We've presented this. Now, again, the thing that we want to be very cautious about is the map that we have is not the plan. It is a rough idea of what we're trying to do here, and it, it, is there a possibility of doing it? That's, that's where we've got Understand that we, we do have the, the authority, I guess, from the client board to, to request that hundred thousand for the PL fund, providing you get some action on the you know the right. 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 Yeah. And that's what we're looking right. for. Right. And I think for that, we, we may be to that point to, to, to I guess we can get a motion from you guys, but uh, you yeah. know I'll make that motion. Well, well, I mean that's what we need to do. We we we, we can probably provide from our um, eighteen budget as much as a hundred thousand dollars to work something like this from our PL fund uh, with the agreement by the, by the policy committee. Uh, contingent on, first of all, you getting the other funds. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. The match being provided. And then it gets a little confusing, more confusing after that, because if the state is providing <coughs> some of that, we would probably want the state to contract directly with you for the 100000 outside of our... Uh, own contract. We wouldn't subcontract with them. We would take the PL funds and you could, same thing we're doing with uh, TARP, with the, with the COA. Talking about PL discretionary. Yeah. <laughs> no, this would be our PL funding, Regular but we'd like for you to just carve that off and contract directly with whoever does the study, okay. unless KYTC is doing the study. And, and Larry, what we're really looking for here, and, and Representative Tipton's the one that said we needed to come here first, is that we're trying to show the governor that there is skin in the game. Sure. And that's and that and, and again, if the governor says I don't have it, we're not going to do it. This this isn't going to be used. But we're trying to show. And again, we we've got some other plans too from the county. We have some funds that we hope will, will be available that we have set aside for infrastructure. <coughs> uh, if that comes through, that can only be used for infrastructure in Bullitt County. That we could maybe pull more money off of. We've got a lot of things. John and I are putting a whole lot into this. That this is our. This is what we can retire on as far as having something that we've actually I'm done. Retired, though, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would be the limits of this design money from where to where? 1.35 is what. No, I mean, I mean the, the extent of the design. All the way to Oldham, all, all the way around. I mean, it's from 71 to 65. 65. Yeah, all the way. The, Cutting through 64. It was about. The design <laughs> fund would be for that. Yes. Yeah. That extreme. When you looked at it, it was around a million dollars if you went to 64 only. But it didn't increase that much once it went north. Right. To go on to 71, yeah. but which to me, to, uh, you get more people involved. That, well, you get more people involved, but that's the correction for long term. Sure. Right. Right. Yeah. So. And, that, and, and again, that's what, we're, that's what we're trying to do. I think most uh, all the representatives that are in here from Bullock County, we're trying to change the, the way we do things in Bullock County, which is we have planning and zoning. We zone, but we don't plan. We're not trying to plan before we zone anything. How far just out, outside the... Gene Snyder loop mileage would just be kind of parallel in our history. It would be at the, it would start at the, at the new interchange, which is five miles south of Shepherdsville. Okay. It would be about three and a half, four miles south of Mount Washington. I'm not sure that's the city limit. It's probably two and a half miles south of, the, uh, and it would hit the Simpsonville area. And I really, I'm sorry, I. Don't remember exactly where it hit oh, 64 would be about the yeah. So yeah. it's eight, 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 eight miles outside, eight, 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 outside. Eight, which is good design. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's inside the Simpsonville area uh, city. It's inside that. Okay. And and it's right. Yeah. Catch it. Okay. Uh, well, we have a motion. Uh, you guys are conversing over here, but oh, no. we're just. We're just I, I guess for clarity purposes, I. I we're, uh, we're really talking about uh, feasibility planning type yes. study. Where might a corridor go? Right. How much would it cost? <clears throat> what benefits would there be? Uh, what type of funding options are there to develop this thing? This is a very big undertaking. So, but this is uh, step one that we have. This is step one. Um, so that that's really what we're talking about. Not really actual. Uh, no design. design. No. no, no, no. 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 And, and that's why the state would pick up then. And, and uh, 
do or? Well, I, I think what these that's guys are telling us is that if there's some local commitment, maybe the governor could include it in the yes. upcoming highway plan, the remaining portion of that, and then we would see a line item in the highway plan, hey, do this uh, right. uh, uh, planning <laughs> study, whatever we call it, uh, to do this feasibility work. And, and what you guys are saying is that the governor might be open to that if if it has some PL funds available, right. like Willow County wants to throw some money in, and probably anyone else, for right. that matter, That's what we're looking at. Uh, that would all sound good because either our governor today is a very good state guy, I'm, uh, where I'm he's either a like a transfer transfer anyway. So, I, if that helps clarify, <coughs> that wouldn't interfere with the governor means that he would put the job on the yeah, right. We would see it come up in the highway plan as a line item, a planning study uh, in the new highway plan, which will come out probably in April or May. And then uh, Travis and my group would set about hiring a consultant probably to start looking at this planning. Effort. But that's where that 1.3 okay. comes into yeah. yeah. play. So we have a motion for that. It a second, a second and we are having a discussion. It, 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 is it clear, pretty clear as far as for this 100000 to be spent if the governor puts it in the plan, I suppose, or his. Right well, now. I mean, it, it, it would just be part of this. The overall. The, yeah. the overall. I think Larry gave a good, good synopsis of what the motion is. Right. Yeah. Sometimes what we see in a highway plan is that it, uh, just a description of the project will say uh, this project to be funded by what's in the highway plan, include um, and it with in addition to PL funds by the MPO. Uh, it would, we would have to work through all those details. But I think today you guys are mostly just looking for some sort of commitment, commitment. that, That's that right. hey, the, the MPO is interested in this idea and may have some mechanism to help fund it and then take that to the governor and say, see, we are interested right. at the local level. That's What's exactly right. on the state front. That's, That's exactly right. Got some skin in the game. Uh, How would that motion be awarded if you could for it? Well, well, if we can go back uh, to the beginning of it, the, the, the motion would be to use $100,000 of our 2018, fiscal year 2018, PL funding uh, okay. to apply toward the study contingent <coughs> on the receipt of, uh, or not the receipt of, but the appearance of that project in the new six-year plan. And the matching funds. And there would have to be local matching funds uh, to local, that, local, yeah. <laughs> whatever we put in. Okay. But it does, it, it would demonstrate uh, a commitment by the MPO that we're, uh, we're looking forward to starting. Okay, well, that, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? So we, had a, we have a motion and a second? I, yes, I made a motion. Right, okay. then uh, he's made a motion. Keith, uh, we have a second, don't we? Well, John can't second it. Did you second? <laughs> I'll make it. Okay. Oh, okay. I thought we had. I'm sorry. I thought we had. Well, well. <laughs> I'm not strong. You're not on. Okay. Not on the reason not to make it. Yeah. I'm on the TTC. <laughs> <laughs> we get too many players. I guess I'm voting for the TPC, so I'll second okay. it. That's what you're looking for. Okay. And we have a question here. I have a question. Um, Larry, we've, we've talked about um, Kip to doing a, a, a freight plan uh, this year. Yes. With, with this. <coughs> The freight plan, is it out of PO funds? Would this jeopardize that or? No, sir. Okay. That's and that's awesome. something that we're looking at later in the year, which will probably use some money from this year and some money from next okay. year. We, we, we've just got some money in our budget to, mm -hmm. to contribute we've had to, to that. Postpone it. Hopefully, we'll get it started before the end of the fiscal year. Okay. So we can use some, some of this year's money. That's the only question I have. Even though this no. would have an impact on freight plan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any, any other questions? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Good day, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, Thank you very much. Other business? Any other business? Yes, sir. Uh, you skipped over uh, number eight, I believe. They're not here. No, no way to report that. That's a good way to. That's a good reason. <laughs> We're going to postpone that until the January. Okay, any other business? Motion to adjourn? No move. Motion to second. All in favor, aye. Aye. aye.